I can't be sitting in uh, Andheri or Bandra and being like, they didn't come to me. <laughs> yeah. Who, why? I, I can't sit back and just wait for things to happen. We don't act to hide, we act to reveal. And I think all work happens before you reach set. A lot of the stars in our country, I, when I look at them, I see them. I don't see characters. Uh, and that's a bit scary to me. So, but that's so lovely to have you on Now Binging. Thank you. Uh, I think you are the queen of streaming. <laughs> okay, with two seasons of Made in Heaven, with two seasons of The Night Manager, you have just hit it out of the ballpark. Now, here's what really fascinates me about you is that you built this career, which started, of course, with Raman Raghav 2.0, Anurag Kashyap, who is a school of filmmaking in himself. But, but, you've built this career without major formal training in acting. And you are a really fine actor. How do you do this? I, uh, this is all very high praise. I'm like, I, I, I have this, what's it called when you believe it's not you? Imposter syndrome. <laughs> Because I feel like, um, as I am, I feel like I'm a really uncomplicated, simple person. But I end up playing parts that have a lot of dimension. And I'm very fortunate to get those parts. But in the process of that, uh, I think there's this duality in the way people see me. Uh, with regards to the question, on, actually, I have been trained in classical dance. Uh, I was in Kuchipudi Kalakshetra when I was a kid. My mom put me in it and uh, not not because someday I wanted to act. It was just something that my mother encouraged. Uh, and then when I moved to Mumbai, I took uh, training in Bharatnatyam. These, although uh, they were not designed for this, like like prep for acting eventually, they have had a very massive and very positive influence on the way I understood expression. I listen to a lot of classical music. I have, I have always enjoyed reading since I was a child. So it made me empathetic since I was uh, quite young. It made me want to, I was just so painfully shy and timid as a kid that in the, it, like through these books, I would become those characters. I would become them in my head. It was such a, such a sweet escape. So I think all these things have naturally helped me empathize with characters uh, better. But Sukhita, are you saying that you might approach a performance and might construct it like a dance? Like you, the rhythms, the beats, and you know what to do when? Uh, from the beginning, I've uh, got opportunities to play parts that, that were complex individuals yeah. in like ordinary people, but in very extraordinary circumstances and how those circumstances forever changed this person, for better or for worse. Uh, I didn't judge my characters and I, I think their good and their bad, I, I, I felt for both and I reasoned both, like both. Like I will cheer for your dreams, but I will also not reprimand you or judge you if you falter because it is human too. So I think that is the approach I've had with characters and I, I really believe in homework. I really believe in technique. Uh, I Most of my prep happens way before I reach set. Um, what do you do? I, uh, so, now I don't know if this is something that works for most people, but I really feel like brilliance and performance, a lot of the credit goes to really good writing, to the writers, to the directors, all the technicians involved. What a good actor does is bring meaning to the silences. If I'm able to pull my character out of the scene and place her on a Sunday afternoon someplace, if I get a sense of who she is and what she do and what her temperament may be like, to, to an extent I feel like I know her. Uh, I, I do breath work. I really think it helps. Obviously, so I don't have formal training in acting, but I've done a few workshops 
which have been very meaningful additions. Um, before I got my first film, and then uh, two, three in the middle, uh, really bright teachers, and uh, it has really helped me. And I intend to do more of it because I feel like how I defined myself, say, two years ago, um, I've outgrown that definition. So I think it's important for an actor to be a little neutral. And these workshops help you question. Yes, that made you sad when you like when you thought about a childhood memory two years ago. It made you sad, but today, it didn't like it doesn't make me sad. I can't draw from that emotion for a scene anymore. So that doesn't work anymore. That doesn't work anymore. You right. can't keep trying to become sad because right. you have to be sad for scenes. So I feel like I've said this before, and because I believe it, I I will say it again. Actors are not artists. Actors are craftsmen. Like which a, means like. Artists are sculptors. They mold out of nothingness and they form and create a, a, a statue, a sculpture, a form, beauty, everything. So you create something out of nothing. Yeah, it, where imagination is involved. Right. Actors are craftsmen. They are like carpenters. You make this. You you have twenty um, shapeless logs of wood. You have to create the same sized door. 20 times in every take you have to hit the mark and you have to cry at that point only and you can't be like oh I'm depleted I can't do it anymore no it's your job and this this attitude was further validated by the filmmakers I got to work with for a film like PS um, I would reach set uh, maybe three or four in the morning I remember shooting for monkey man in Batam, Indonesia. For some two days, I was flying multiple connections, uh, lockdown or something. I don't know. And I reached set. I had not slept in some 48, 50 you hours. You reached which set? PS. PS. Okay. Uh, Pony and Selvan for people who are confused. Yeah. Which uh -huh. one? One or two? I mean, we shot it together. That's right. You shot it together. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, it was in Hyderabad, Ramji Film City. And uh, I didn't sleep at all. I was. It was just meant to be a scene where I'm just there. Uh, I was already feeling uh, very sulky about the fact that I had to be kind of written out of a couple of scenes because of the whole clash and it was a full khichdi with my dates. I reach and on the spot while I'm walking to set from the vanity van that uh, there's a song, uh, you're dancing now. In my head, I'm like, yay. Because <laughs> it's an ARMR musical. It's Mani Ratnam, the filmmaker. It's Brinda Master. Everyone's so bright and so good at what they do. What a wonderful opportunity. And I've always wanted to dance, um, like in films, but I've, ne I've not had the chance to. So this was just, I, I didn't speak the language. I didn't speak Tamil at that time. I was listening to the song the very first time while I was dancing. And it was really complicated choreography. I hadn't slept and I was so nervous I didn't eat. And it was like scorching heat. I don't know how Which I, song is this? This song didn't even make it to the film. <laughs> Shut! <laughs> but even <laughs> like another song, I had a similar experience. And I remember Mani sir saying this to... I think there was an AD or a costume. Someone saying that... Yeah, like after pack up, you know, so she's she's gone. And he's just like, actors, this is what they should do. They should be able to perform. Whether he actually has that ex expectation from actors or not, I don't know. But I could see that as a filmmaker, he felt benefited by someone who was able to... Deliver. Deliver. Yeah. And that made me think that, yes, this attitude of mine has been helpful. Same with Raman Raghav. Same with... Uh, Made in Heaven, I remember season one when uh, the OTT format of storytelling, it was so new that as an actor, we on, on the same day, we were shooting completely different directors who had very different uh, ideas of the same emotion. And because their individual disposition is different, the way they perceived the same scene was different. Sure. So sometimes you're, you're shooting across episode two, episode 7 and the flashback in episode 9, for example. And there's two levels of... All of this is happening on one day with different filmmakers across different episodes. 
I had to deliver. Which is why I feel like it is sometimes important to not just bring emotionality, but also to bring technique. It's inevitable. Yeah. We don't act to hide. We act to reveal. And I think all work happens before you reach set. Once you reach set, you should, I feel, you should be so prepared that whatever circumstance, we should then be able to dance. But you can only dance freestyle when you have rhythm in you. So, so the, would you say it's this attitude that also helped you to get through your first day on a film shoot, which I read was obviously Raman Raghav 2.0. But the first thing Anurag wanted to shoot was the sex scene. Because <laughs> yeah. his, his thing is do the hardest thing first. Correct. And you just powered through. I don't know how I did it. Now when I think back and I try to... Because you're just so... I'd done a lot of auditions at that by that point. I... Um, in a nutshell, after college, I took part in Miss India. Right. I won. And I was always very fascinated by the idea of fashion. So I, I, I modeled for a bit. I was a model for about a year. But I, I quickly realized that I have a very deep-seated desire for storytelling. And I was not able to do that through modeling. Maybe some other models are able to do it. I, didn't, I wasn't able to. I felt stunted. It was also a time I was backpacking a lot. My life was like a... Imtiaz Ali montage, uh, but budget. Uh, <laughs> uh, at that time, I was doing a lot of uh, auditions for ads because as a model, you also test for TV commercials. Yeah. And uh, I wasn't really getting through, but I didn't get anything. But in the process of those auditions, I realized that it's it, this, this constant duality. I really loved performing as a child, but I was very timid and very scared. I don't know. I just was. I was just shy. Like, I was constantly these opposites. And I wanted to be uh, expressive, but I also wanted to be subdued in, in the way. Like, I, I think I was constantly walking a tightrope between... A few parallels in my head. I don't know if it's because I'm a Gemini or what. But it's like I've always been uh, at, at, in the, the eye of these two contradictions, like, like a whirlpool. Uh, I'd done so many auditions and I got a call for my first film audition. And by that time, I had given myself a time frame. I'd, uh, I would thought that, okay, I finished college. I'd enrolled for master's and I've dropped out because I won Miss India. And I was not able to properly pursue it. And... I really respect academics. I come from a family of that's oriented academically. Deeply oriented. academic. Yeah, your sister's a doctor. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I couldn't disrespect it by not by just namesake doing it. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just felt like, okay, if I'm going to do this, if I'm going to explore this, I'm going to give it a time frame. I'm going to be responsible with my time. I'm going to give it three years to find my bearings. And if I do, we'll see. If I don't, I'm going to go back to studying with joy and with gratitude for having had that chance to at least explore. It was the tail end of that. I gave me three years and it was the tail end of the third year by when I, I auditioned knowing that it's done. Yeah, now I'm going to go back. GMAT. Okay. I was like... Acting khatam. Act. I was just like... Because I didn't grow up watching... Uh, being cinema crazy. Right. I was always book crazy. Um, I just, like everything, each step along the way, I I figured through the course of it. Um, by the time I hit the first film audition, everything changed. I was like, I am so stupid to have given myself a time frame. This is so good and I've not even begun doing this. Because until then, uh, Television commercials, you're, you're like a salesman who's glorified and is given some narrative. There's no expression creatively, really. But uh, when I was given this scene to audition and I didn't know who the filmmaker, nothing, I didn't know any of the other uh, variables. I was, I found, I, w I resonated with just the emotion of the scene. Not because I had gone through an experience like that, but in expressing that, I felt closer to myself. I just felt like this is me. In real life, I'm just so conscious of perhaps being judged or am I 
uh, like not liked am i you know uh, palatable enough in this social company i'm i was constantly trying to belong because i was always a misfit wherever i was uh, so i was so there was always this layer of like my mind working all the time that when i was acting i just was because i wasn't me in the guise of that character i was able to be it's like it's like that you know they say manas ekam vachas ekam karman ekam mahatmanam when your mind what you like what you think what you say what you do when they are in harmony that is greatness bliss fulfillment whatever you call it i felt that it didn't matter if i got it or not i just knew that this is special and i feel connected with it at a very deep level and it didn't matter if i uh, became a star all that thinking of the trade aspect of films came in much much later i just knew that this is something i want to do because for once i feel the things that i wish i always wished oh, I, i wish i could be as confident as her or as playful as him or as just like lovably uh, loud as this person but i just wasn't able to be because i was so conscious but through characters i could be i ended up getting the part and it meant so much that uh, i don't know i'm sure i would have if someone told me to eat dung i would do it for every take i was an instrument so i didn't feel diminished or i wasn't conscious it's so strange and i was quite young at the time yeah yeah i mean like there's a lot of girls who i see are very emotionally um how do i say not as stunted as i was um i grew up in vaizag until i was 16 17 and then i moved to mumbai so my um college years i just i was just like i'm that also but i want to be this also you are the experiences you've had but you're also the experiences you want to have so i was just in this it was tumultuous you know it's those beautiful years that are character building yeah. and um, you just I, did it i yeah when in character i could do things that me as a person wouldn't even dream of and in having done those i feel freed that oh no i get that that makes sense but at this time so that i read that when you first moved to mumbai right in you you've been here like some 13 14 years right. and yeah. and you changed homes 13 times yeah right? yeah and i was just thinking i'm like i mean that's literally being unstable uh, plus you have such an unstable profession and you're so young that's why i'm loco i'm crazy <laughs> <laughs> how did you find your way i haven't found my way i float about i i have recently actually in the lockdown i figured out like how they say yin and yang there's two things to everything and when those two things are running in harmony you're balanced it's like everything has um say yin and yang philosophy and structure the creative stimulation and fulfillment but also being an asset to a producer such that they can put their money on you so yeah. that you can it's you can bring bums on seats which is assuring to them so all these things i figured with time that i i can't be be like oh i just love acting and i can act at home also nobody is stopping me but a story more than anything wants to be seen wants to be heard so if i wanted to tell those stories i had to make myself someone who had who who stands for something and i wanted i mean my career is very brief it's not like it's i've done a lot but i i it just meant a lot to me that i i do what i do with clarity focus and a certain surrender but you also you also like you just said by your dna are a pan indian actor right you're also transiting so much between industries this i must admit that it did not uh, it's not something that i 
decidedly belong with like to do i was just acutely aware of the fact that i don't really come from the hood i don't really know people here so the only way i had a chance of actually having a shot at something is by being um of value if a massive commercial film were to come my way of course i would have loved to be a part of it and i would have been the same 100% that i keep talking about there too but uh, if that didn't naturally happen what i can definitely do from my end is to make sure that from the opportunities that i have access to pick things that i think may be good for me yeah i thought i'm going to try and do work that allows people to understand that i'm very interested in performance that i can deliver uh, whatever the director's vision is i can uh, I, i i can be compatible to their vision i'm a giving collaborator and i thought um, i'm telugu speaking i uh, can look very south indian and there are so many regional industries which i mean such such diverse filmmaking styles stories how can i belong like who knows let me let me spread my wings let me see what i can do i it didn't matter if i was not paid also i just wanted to be a part of good stories and um, i done a very indie ish telugu film gudachari which went on to do really well uh i with the same team i did major in fact later um then i did a moton in malayalam with geetu mohanda so beautiful i uh, it was i i reached out to the filmmaker and she didn't believe that i could she wasn't confident that i could play a a prostitute uh, from kamatipura because she assumed that a certain kind of a physicality would be perhaps better suited i i went to kamatipura i rented clothes i did this photo shoot got into a lot of trouble i had to run away from there i it was an uncomfortable scenario that eventually happened but those pictures i treasure i showed it to her and she saw that i could belong with that world because she saw me as this model so i was like oh no 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 no, no. <laughs> so you've actually chased roles like this i have it was not a glamorous part it was not a conventional commercial film but it was a film i felt for and a film that allowed me to showcase a, a side of my personality uh the emotional i i connected with it, it was a beautiful film and uh, uh it was maybe a 10 minute role because i i can't be sitting in uh, andheri or bandra and being like they didn't come to me <laughs> who why i i can't sit back and just wait for things to happen I, I, I think I also see that like how hard my parents have worked to, to give me and my sister the, the courage to dream. I respect the spirit of of chasing your passion. I I respect it. So it always seemed like a very natural pursuit for me. If you love something, give your all to it. Don't sit back and complain. Yeah. Um, I obviously complain. I obviously I'm just like. I don't really want to do this but it's not happening but I do what I can. Yeah. Like I I loved my experience of having uh, of doing Kurup uh, with Dulka. It was just so different from Atara. So I just tried to belong on a bunch of canvases. Kya pata? <laughs> Tell me given that the conversation for the last I don't know 3 4 years has only now been about pan Indian cinema. Do you feel like you have an edge? I don't know. I don't know. I genuinely do believe that I I have faith, not just belief. I have faith that I can play um someone from very different parts of India physicality wise. And I think uh that is an important aspect of uh casting. because i can't look completely different from something and so in terms of that i do believe that there is a suitability that may work in my favor but the unfortunate thing is people i feel 
are often like I feel like I got discovered in the mainstream through Made in Heaven yeah. and the character of Tara is so well written. I am worlds apart from how she is. I'm emotional, I'm messy, I'm expressive, I'm... Tara is very cold, very distant. Like she could be going through the most horrid uh, inner turmoil, but she just won't let it break. Zoya had always one brief, steel. That's the one thing she'd say. So to play a character like that, then you feel like it's it's harder than playing expressive characters because she can't break, you can't show it, but you gotta feel it and there has to be that believability that she is this person, damn. But I feel like people attach that to me. So I'm like, oh man, I hope I get to play parts that are very different in temperament from They her. all think you are Tara now. Yeah, which is so crazy because people meet me, they're just like, I'm very intimidated, I know, like Tara. I'm like, I have lent my physicality to a character, but I'm not her. Yeah. I mean, there are days when I'm like, what would Tara do <laughs> on, on weaker days? Because I, I love how she loves herself or not loves herself but like prioritizes herself yeah yeah and she always finds a way yeah she's just unwilling to feel like a like a victim yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but tell me after playing her and and as you said you know people discovered you through made in heaven uh, and of course being kaveri in the night the night manager, manager. you know are people you talked about typecasting are people looking at you and saying oh we see sultry woman with a dark past. Uh, because you you talked about how when people say you're desirable, you're like, look, it's a compliment and I enjoy it, but I have so much more to offer. Are you finding that they're only seeing you like that? Ma'am, here's the question I have. I feel like if I were to, uh, I have a certain uh, physicality that, uh, I mean, I can't make myself, I don't know, deliberately unlike myself so as to be um i don't know liked better I, I don't i don't know sure this is this is what i've got as my raw material um i'm not going to deliberately look shabby uh so as to be seen as yeah she can be this also i mean i it's it's tricky yeah it's a tough one it's a, it's tricky why of course you'd want to be presentable if, for example, you have nice hair, of course you would want to wear it down. No, no, I'm going to tie it up because I, I want people to know that I'm not like aware that my hair is nice. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it's a very like silly example, but uh, I'm not attached to my body, my, my name, nothing. I, the only thing I like attached is a bathroom. Like, so... I just really hope that um, this sort of, when a character becomes embossed upon your identity, it's a bit scary. Yeah. Because I'm not dark. I'm not complex. In fact, I'm very uh, amusingly small. I'm so... Uh, quick to get upset or low food tolerance, hunger tolerance. I'm just, I'm just so human in the most pettiest of ways that I feel like I guess, I guess if I were to, if I were to get a part that allows me to be these sides of myself, people would see me very differently. Hmm. You know, there's a lightness to my being. I'm not, I'm not bogged down by the larger difficulties of life or, or I'm not constantly in that loop but because Kaveri which uh, Night Manager did reach a larger segment I'm excited about it because it's um, commercially driven the project and uh, uh, it's it's been made in a like there's a flamboyance to it so somewhere you hope that I hope like I, th this reaches the people that it's meant for uh, otherwise it just loses meaning so it did, and I was very happy about it. It's not the biggest part, but I wanted to be able to sample it all. Um, I want to do parts that are very different from what I've done because there's more I can offer. Uh, I'm an actor. I'm I'm not rich, I'm not poor, I'm not happy, I'm not depleted, I'm not uh, full of myself. I'm nothing. I'm 
like being nothing is my job yeah as an individual which is why i think stardom in general is a very tricky slope cuz a lot of the stars in our country i when i look at them i see them i don't see characters uh and that's a bit scary to me but i also understand that trade works a certain way stars guarantee bums on seats actors pure acting led performers uh they bring skill a certain believability a certain truth and i don't know why they're often separate yeah so it's i don't know the i don't have the answers i just want to be true but you also not just seen as somebody attractive you're also st- seen as somebody who's very stylish and looking at you uh, i i completely uh, second that opinion <laughs> that you're a style maven so when you are acting so with that how much of your personal style comes into the character does it at all or do you just create the character no i i actually i am not that it took me time to realize that actually i'm not that interested in like i respect fashion but i'm not very invested in being fashionable i i like people who have style that's theirs and there's no good or bad with style someone could could literally wear a a sparrow nest weave it into their hair and wear it and that's just them there's no right or wrong there's no valid uncool current i i i don't think i i don't connect with that thought and i i like people who have the courage to be original and it is that spirit that i want my characters to have i want them to be whatever they are uh absolutely and i feel like i'm a canvas blank canvas and the character is the color i've got to be empty for them to right yeah you need to absorb their their wonders and grief and all of that so i love to be emptied mm. i love to feel belittled by something incredible like a great love story a like like magnificent heartbreak where i'm sad and i shall be sad for one week i love it i love to indulge <laughs> but that can only happen when the experience is pure yeah and for that i've i've got to be a receiver you talked about monkey man what can you tell us about dev patel they will tell us dev is so elusive um uh, it's he's a, making his directorial debut how exciting it's it's he's just he's a fantastic director i mean he's a really good actor but i think he's an even better director uh he worked on this script for a uh, close to 8 years and when my first film came out raman raghav no sorry before the film came out uh we had just finished shooting and i was called in for an audition we didn't know what it was i did round 1 and i was called for round 2 and round 2 i walk in and this man is standing there and i was just like hi nice to meet you i was just like what because this was right like a little after slum dog millionaire and i was just like he's an actor right actors can direct also like i don't know i was just very like overwhelmed and he really liked my audition and i mean he gave me some directions and and then i didn't hear back and i was just like of course i didn't get it duh but some 4 5 years later uh just before the lockdown or a month before something around that time i get a call from another casting agent and i come to meet and again this one pragat ho gaya i say and i'm like and he and and he told me that you know i didn't even remember apparently i'd i'd said some um, i shared some stories or anecdotes or i did some improv in a certain way in the scene i didn't remember he said it it moved him to rewrite the character in certain ways wow and he's like since then it's only been you whenever it would be made and high praise I was so struck. No, because I feel like very very accomplished filmmakers and actor loves working under them because you can learn and you bask in the glory that is their their brilliance. But when someone's a new filmmaker, that's their world, that's their life, that's all their fears on paper. 
that's their biggest dream and that's just everything that's their mother that's the bible and they want you to partake it's like the last meal before you die yeah. they're sharing it with you so it means a lot to work with newcomers uh, or people who are just starting something new in their life and and especially for him because he's accomplished as an actor so i'm sure that he wants to make sure it's perfect in his head yeah do we have a release date they have not shared it with me but there is a uh, movement there is some exciting development i'm hearing from crew but they won't tell me yet so yeah soon hopefully uh yeah how exciting i've had so many releases and so many rounds of promotions in the past few months like ps1 ps2 night manager 1 2 made in heaven season 2 now i just i just feel like it's like someone just has to like sit across and i just start talking about it <laughs> so you're all primed they should find it they should release it quickly while you're still in the talking mode <laughs> that's so fab well listen we have to now move on to the binge list okay, okay. in which in which we are going to figure out what type of binger you are so are you a person who binges or do you pace out your viewing pleasures if i pace it out i'll never go back really i think so to matlab all nighters and all yeah yeah i i i love to consume it start to finish otherwise i just i don't know i feel like otherwise i'm not being loyal i don't know some weird this thing yeah like i started watching citadel uh, i love priyanka chopra i started watching it and um, i was up till 4 in the night and i finished it yeah but like the bear which is amazing i watched three episodes and for some reason i had to pause I haven't gone back since and I loved it. I don't know. So I think it's I'm very inconsistent and I lack certain basic discipline in life. So I don't trust myself to to matlab it's either all in or no. Yeah, yeah. There's no there's no regulation. There's it's it's like full flame or just nothing. Simp nahi rakh sakte. <laughs> is there a performance in an indian show that you've seen recently that you wish you had done not indian show but a uh, flea bag i can't see my myself in place of some of the performances because everyone was really good yeah but something like flea bag or something with action that stuff i'd love you want to do action i would love to i uh, i was an ncc cadet as a kid hey patriotic and also i was like uh, yeah like i just i just wanted to be i think gender neutral like i just wanted to be i think i want to be like a man i want to be strong i want to be able and not that i thought women were not that but i just i loved action i love watching action also it's so cool <laughs> i love sci-fi and action to watch i think you would be a good addition to the rohit shetty cop universe Ooh, as one of the cops. As one of the cops. Why not? We just say. <laughs> hey, I think you. Like could... I used to love Lara Croft. Yeah. Yeah, because I used to be like, wow, that's so cool. It's like... so cool, yeah. Absolutely. Okay, is there a genre you're passionate to? So you just said sci-fi. Sci-fi, it's my favorite. Really? Yeah, because I'm able to believe it. I feel like when something's um, real, like a real world kind of a thing. there's always a little filminess to it or some disagreement that i feel like or i see people around me feel no no it was really nice but like aise kon karta hai aur are filmon mein hi hota hai ye sab or something where people compare their life to a film and agree or disagree but with sci-fi you have to surrender to that world and yeah. the rules of that world and once you're in there you're so accepting of what happens which like when i watched harry potter or narnia as a kid i was so much more accepting of the emotions within that world because us world ke rules us world ke that logic so it's about that commitment yeah i like films that ask me to commit to them nice okay since made in heaven season 2 and this is a tough one had several directors do you have a favorite episode I think Radhika Apte's episode was quite uh, poignant. 
like when yeah. we were shooting although i don't have much to do uh, as a, as an actor yeah even the amirza's episode because i do think that uh, i don't think there are solutions to problems right away but uh, in being able to voice the problem i think that's that's one step ahead in the right direction absolutely so i think absolutely. i like that um what are some recent shows that you've loved the bear although i haven't finished it uh like i love shows like pushpavali or like you know like shows set in middle india because maybe because i come from there so there's there's a resonance when something's too um glitzy i try to enjoy it but i don't know i just zone out yeah cuz i just feel like everything's so fancy i can't connect but who knows maybe people looking at me think that i was just going to say i'm like shit maybe tara's pretty fancy okay yeah 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 true i wonder what i would have thought of made in heaven if i hadn't been a part of it yeah is there a trait in tara that you wish you had i think her her ability to not crash down i get very existential she's not like that very clear headed one of those people you know she'd be like like if you screwed her over she'd be like don't be sorry be better that is just like ah i can never be like that. <laughs> like if someone has slapped me i'll be like no sorry for making you angry like i'll be that person <laughs> so tara is such a bad ass <laughs> now if someone didn't know your work which performance of yours would they re- would you recommend they start with mouton and ghost stories interesting uh, yeah but if i wanted someone to i don't know like depends on who if it's a cute guy then i'll be like ha huh, watch night manager <laughs> i don't know <laughs> that's right <laughs> it's so funny okay we are now at the last segment now i'm going to give you some choices and you're going to tell me what you would choose if you could be an entrepreneur for a day what company would you start and why a wedding organizing company like made in heaven an arms dealing company a food truck like in chef or would you run a hotel in shimla like in night manager i think food truck yeah sounds yeah. like fun no huh? no also i love i i eat a lot of food from food trucks and like in visa by the coast we have these little shack type things and i love i mean it's clearly not very ambitious but you grow rich in other ways it's not just money like you meet cool people you can be on the move just like hey not at the mood anymore like go to some other location and it's awesome yeah. and i i actually really like cooking also mm. so yeah that works mm. okay if you could portray one character differently from one of your past films or shows which role would it be and what difference would you bring to it now vanati from ps2 Kaveri from Night Manager, Samira Rao from Gudachari, or Sharada from Kurup. I would love to play Tara differently, though. Really? I think just it would be very interesting uh, to be able to perform her with a, the same character, same circumstances, same inner landscape, but different disposition. What if she was a snappy, like snarky, just doesn't have pain? What if she was that? What if she was? L- loud as opposed to cold sure that's but, interesting but the same person yeah yeah i think that changes the way people maybe people would have perceived me also actually i wonder because it's so easy for me to look cold people are like ha huh, she too didn't do any acting that's her only <laughs> and i'm like i am not a psycho bitch <laughs> Okay, which film do you think showed weddings in the most real way possible? Two states, Bang Baja Barat, Ye Jawani Hai Diwani, or Tanu Vets Manu? I remember loving Tanu Vets Manu so much that I just want to pick that. Both such good performers. Yeah. Amazing music, so yeah. vibrant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And since you're an avid reader, 
what would be the best location for you to just lounge with a book and a cup of chai? Would it be the Khanna House from Made in Heaven? Would it be Shelley's Villa in Sri Lanka? Would it be the Chola Palace from PS2? Or the Hotel in Nice from Made in Heaven Season 2? Out of these, I think the, the, the palace we shot in by the Narmada for PS. For PS. It's so beautiful. Yeah. But there's another movie uh, location. I love the movie. Lutera. Ranveer was amazing. Sonakshi was amazing. Vikram Motwane killed it. Everything was so good. And she goes to Dalhousie in the movie. That house? Yeah. It has feels. I want to sit there in a shawl, having chai and be intense. Yeah, I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, which character of yours is the closest to your off-screen personality? Is it Tara, Sharadamma from Kurup, uh, Pramoda Reddy from Major or Kaveri? From no, Major. Not Pramoda. Maybe, maybe Sharada. She's, she's a little conservative, but she's also feisty. She's in a different time. But she still stands for herself, stands up for herself. There's, there's a quiet goodness about her. There's a, there's, a, there's a dignity, but also a slight rebellion underneath. I, I enjoyed that. I felt close to her. And if you were going to make a film on a dysfunctional wedding, who would you cast for My the role? My parents. <laughs> no, the, sadly, they're not part of the choices. <laughs> Who would you cast for the role of a wedding planner? Jim Sarb, Anil Kapoor, Aditya Roy Kapoor or Vicky Kaushal? Not Aditya. He will be sleeping only, I think. Uh, I think Anil sir should be in, in charge of some departments. Uh, I think Vicky. Very like, I think, I think he, he has it in him to be responsible, get things done on time, like proper. Yeah, yeah. likeable also. Yeah. Hera? Yeah, I think he, he's also like well-mannered and you know, he'll, he'll receive guests nicely. Like I can imagine him being good. <laughs> so, Bita, that is fabulous. Thank you. This Thank is such you. fun and I cannot wait to see what you do next. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can you tell us what it will be? I have a really funky something that I have uh, that I shot for last year in Scotland with someone who's amazing uh, maybe that will release by the end of the year so I'm excited about it and that's all you can say something with someone <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I can't Sometimes. wait to see can't wait to see something with someone thank you so much <laughs> thank you thank, thank you, you. And I was called in for an audition we didn't know what it was. I did round one and I was called for round two. And round two, I walk in and this man is standing there and I was just like, this, 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 hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> I was just like, what? Because this was right, like a little after Slumdog Millionaire. And I was just like, he's an actor, right? Actors can direct also. Like, I don't know. I was just very like overwhelmed. And he really liked my audition. Hi, 